duel her. I very much can be, but what's a little bit surprising to me is that the change in the draft for Hammers, yesterday we saw so much emphasis from them on the Black Feather. Like they were picking Black Feather immediately in these drafts. They were banning away the Rhyme every game. Of course, the Rhyme ban likely was just targeted against Kaz, but uh, the fact that they've moved away from the Black Feather for their first pick is a little bit surprising when all of the other captains were still available as well. So. Uh, they really wanted to get this Arden pick for themselves. I wouldn't be surprised if we do end up seeing the Black Feather come out uh, in this draft just because Big Paws was having so much success with it yesterday. Yeah, it's definitely a hero that suits Big Paws' play style. And with the Rona off the table, it makes a lot of sense. But again, that Varya can be very, very scary. And with her arc recursion, she actually can fairly effectively break away from that... Uh, Black Feathers dive and put him in a very susceptible to damage area, but it's a Reza pickup here by the side of Hammers. You have to imagine that's going to be going in the jungle. Absolutely, a jungle hero for the most part. You know, when he came out, there was a lot of people that were trying him in the jungle in the lane, and it just always seems to work a lot better in the jungle. But interesting to see if they can make the same level of plays that we saw. I love Joseph making with the Reza yesterday. But a Grace will be the pickup for Cloud9. Very strong captain. A little bit surprised that it's not a Churnwalker, as that Churnwalker kind of been going through these drafts the last couple of days. A lot of teams not really putting the same level of emphasis on them that we saw throughout the earlier portions of this tournament. Now Cloud9 <laughs> coming down to the wire, but they do lock in the Kashka for Joseph, so going to be matching the early game aggression of the Reza with the Kashka of his own. Yeah, and I got to give an edge to the Kashka in the first couple levels just because of her speed and mobility to get in and out of the jungle, get in and out of sticky situations. There's that Black Feather pickup for this uh, for Big Paws, uh, at least very likely Big Paws in the lane. And we'll have to see how Yugi can match up against I Love Joseph in the jungle. That's really where I expect to see a lot of the focus on this match. Now, just to clarify the rosters we have going into this, everybody, we do have Wrecked, uh, Ian, and I Love Joseph will be playing for the side of Cloud9 up against Chicken, Yugi, and Big Paws um, ready to go for the side of Hammers. So no old school, and that does kind of put a little bit of a hindrance on it for me. Will we actually see Joseph go up into the lane uh, to play on this Varya, or is he going to be sticking on the Kashka in the jungle? That's yet to be seen, Bacon, but I definitely think... Uh, that does bring things a little bit more on even footing between these two teams. Again, Hammers, a very newly assembled roster, and Cloud9 playing with a couple subs here. So kind of on par with the uh, synergy, at least in my opinion. Well, I mean, you also got to look at, you know, we talk about the fact that it's a new roster for Hammers, but they put up a hell of a fight yesterday. They're also a team that took down Tribe. Like, they're just because they're a new roster, you cannot overlook them. It's actually a very strong team from what we have seen thus far. So we are going to be getting into this one. As you mentioned, it will be Azure and I and Wrecked both in the roster for Cloud9, at least for game number one. We'll see if that changes later on in the series. But without Gabe Vizzle and without Old School, it's definitely going to be an uphill battle for the side of Cloud9. But I mean, these are guys that they've They've been the subs for a while. You know, Wrecked has been there. He's been at the top of the Vainglory scene. He, We saw yesterday he has not really lost a step. And he was playing the Lyra for the most part yesterday. Now going to be on this Grace. Still bringing the healing capabilities to the fold. Just in a little bit of a different style. So I'm looking forward to seeing how these two teams are going to match up. And we're about to find out as we load onto the Halcyon fold for game number one. Yeah, and it's going to be exciting to see these two teams duke it out here. Bacon, Yugi has gotten one of his favorite heroes in the jungle. That Red uh, was a hero that he played quite a substantial amount. But I love Joseph. He is going to be in the jungle. He is going to be on this Kashka. And again, when Joseph gets on those very aggressive playmaking heroes, that's where we see the most success out of Cloud9. So pretty standard rotation so far both the uh, carry is going to be splitting the gold and the uh experience in the back of the jungle there meanwhile both of these captains they're going to go ahead and rotate over kind of get a little bit of vision on the middle bit of the uh, middle of the map and get an idea of which team has made the faster rotation 
Yeah, right now it's going to be Cloud9 getting there just a little bit quicker. We'll see if that ends up leading to their them getting the Elder Tree in. But actually, as we get into positions, it looks like Hammers have the advantageous spot. Azure and I a little bit low, needs to be careful with this Varya. But the Treant has been started up. Will it get stolen away? Or will Hammers be able to secure it? It does get stolen. Wrecked actually takes care of that one. Now they're going to continue this chase. They take down Yugi for first blood. Joseph a little bit low, but he just backs away on this Kashka. I'm just going to recall back to base. Azure and I and Wrecked going to be coming up into this lane, trying to get some harassment onto Big Paws. Big Paws looking to trade damage right back onto Azure and I oh. will get the execution. Now Wrecked looking to do what he can, but with the barriers from the Healing Flask and the Vanguard, Big Paws will be able to stay alive. So one for one trade in far as, as far as the kills go, but a very slight uh, you know, edge in terms of the experience gained because of the Treant going the way of Cloud9. Yeah, excellent start there by both of these teams. I thought for sure Pause was going to drop there, but excellent timing on that Healing Flask. Pair it up with the Vanguard coming out of Chicken on this Arden. They were able to pick up a return kill, but Joseph, he's looking for Big Pause and he's <laughs> going to find him. Yeah, Joseph just flying up into the lane out of the jungle will find a kill. And I like what we're seeing out of Cloud9 just already in these first couple minutes, as opposed to what we were seeing yesterday from the Hammer's opponents. Your big pause yesterday was able to dominate the lane a couple of games just by putting massive pressure on taking those minions, just shoving the lane in as hard as he could, taking advantage of rotation timings. Cloud9 having none of that as they send Joseph up to the lane immediately to punish Big Paws for being so far forward. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. And that puts a second kill on the board for Cloud9. And once again, Big Paws answers back, gets a kill of his own. But I think Yugi is in a pretty rough spot down here in the jungle, both wrecked and Azure and I looking for a kill. But can they find it in time? Reza pretty quick and good at escaping. And very good at escaping, and especially when you get a double root from the Treant. However, Yu-Gi-Oh! is still going to be able to get away with the Vanguard from Chicken rotating down into the jungle to help his teammate out. Rex still trying to chase this one up. Yugi, got to be careful. He does pop the healing flask. He's looking to get this Treant for a little bit more sustain. He will get that, and now Rex realizes he needs to leave or he is going to be in trouble. But with Joseph coming over... They're going to communicate pretty well with each other and just say, you know what, let's just stick around. Let's try and steal away some camps. Maybe look for a kill, but Big Paws recalling now. It's going to get a little bit dicey if they stick around too long. Yugi is able to secure most of his jungle. And so that's a lot of time that he they were able to waste from both Joseph and Rex. And so good job by both uh, Chicken and Yugi in not only keeping Yugi alive, but also making sure that they don't lose out much of their jungle camps. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. And so far this game, we're pretty much at a stalemate as far as the gold and experience go. Uh, levels pretty even across the board for the most part, at least. Uh, gold almost dead even despite, uh, you know, first blood and all sorts of those things. But Hammers, they're looking for this first turret, but here comes Joseph. There comes Joseph diving on up, but he's not going to be able to have much impact. It would have been a three on two situation. This is the way Hammers have been playing all tournament long. Very aggressive in the lane, putting pressure onto the opponent's turrets and looking to take those objectives down. It has worked out exceptionally well for them. Obviously getting them into the top four, looking to make that top three with a victory here today. So great job by Big Paws once again taking down that turret before his opponents. And you look at the difference as it actually hold up because I Love Joseph is going to get chased down here. Big Paws doing what he can. Here comes Azure and I, though, with Wrecked, and that's going to stop the aggression, at least temporarily. Yeah, temporarily stopped indeed. We do have that first item spike now complete for the Reza. That Aftershock is complete. I Love Joseph, he's getting there, but doesn't quite have it. You know, he's got gold in spend but that gold does not help you in a fight as azure and i on the run a beautiful arc recursion to get out of combat there and uh still anybody's game you know the hammers were able to pick up the first turret but this varia is only going to get stronger and stronger and more to deal with as the game goes on so big pause he's developing a little bit of lead this should help but if we get into max builds, Azure and I can have a huge impact here on Varya. 
Absolutely, the late game Varya is a monster, especially with this weapon power build. You know, a lot of people thought it was kind of a joke at first when they first started seeing it, but it is incredibly powerful, especially in the late game. You are a little bit vulnerable as Varya, but you dish out a ton of damage in these team fights if you can stay safe and with a grace, you're gonna be able to stay safe pretty effectively. Azure and I throwing out the ult there. As a weapon body, the ult's never really gonna do that much damage, but it does do a, you know, every little bit of damage helps, and it does help scout out your opponents as well. The full on team fight has broken out. Rekt's gonna get a double stun with the Holy Nova. Joseph jumps back in, but takes a lot of damage. That's going to be Yugi chasing him on down, finding that kill. And now they can look to continue on to Azure and I, finding the kill on Devaria as well. Rekt should be able to get out alive, but you look at where Yugi is going immediately, just looking to take these back camps away, looking to deny gold from Cloud9. And meanwhile, Rekt actually does get wrecked up in the lane. And another kill going the way of Hammers. Yeah, up five to two at this point. They've got themselves almost a two and a half thousand gold lead. They're taking away some additional farm out of the jungle here. This is a good start for Hammers, and if they can keep this momentum up, they're going to keep Kashka down, and this Blackfeather is going to have such an easier time dealing with the aggression that can come out of that pick. Uh, Yugi, again, on one of his comfort picks, has really an advantage in CS here early on, but has definitely made his presence in the team fights and has been able to chase down a couple extra kills. So uh, well played by him already so far this game. But here, it's going to be... Cloud9 looking for some damage on this turret. I'm looking to try and even up that turret score, but you see Yugi and Big Buzz, they're tr looking to fight them off. They do get the turret down, Cloud9 does, but now are they going to pay for it at all? Looks like they should be able to get away for the most part. I love Joseph. He's going the wrong direction, though, and he's going to get caught. Slowed up by the sentry makes him an easy target for Yugi to take down. And now you see immediately Big Paws trying to push in this wave once more. Says, you know what? You took down our turret. We're just going to try and get some pressure onto your tier two or just go into your jungle. That seems to be the call now for Big Paws and Chicken. Got to be careful. You don't overstay your welcome. The sentry's going to start up. Double stun from the Holy Nova. And they are just focusing everything onto Azure. He's going to get the Divine Intervention. It's not going to do enough to keep him alive. And Hammers are just being so aggressive against Cloud9. Joseph, he's going to fall as well. That's two more kills. Nine to two now for Hammers. And now they're looking for the ace. They're going to get the ace. And that will lead to another turret. Absolutely, Bacon. That's going to be a big spike of gold going over into the Hammers' pockets. Obviously, that first turret worth about 200 gold a person, but the second one is that full 300 gold per player. So that is a uh, momentous start. But Big Paws may be caught in a sticky situation here, but with the help of Chicken... With the help of Chicken, will be able to actually turn this around. Gets out, goes back in, gets the healing coming through, and Yugi is looking to dive in deep. Azure and I is going to fall. Wrecked once again, last man standing. Will they have the damage to take him out underneath this choke point turret? They're all very low, but Big Paw's just tanking up this turret. Finally, they do switch turret aggros, but Rek bought some time for him to heal himself up with the Divine Intervention. Big Paw's will finally go down, but not before. He, it's just hammers running wild with this game. Yugi gets yummy, Ken and Frenzy still doesn't fall, and maybe even can look to turn this around. Joseph chases too deep, but Joseph will get the kill on to Chicken. Yugi still just running for the hills, hoping the Crystal Sentry might give him a little bit of assistance as he goes on in, but he doesn't have the damage. Joseph will get that third kill. No ace coming through, but signs of life for Cloud9. Yeah, you can never count this team down, especially when they have I Love Joseph and Wrecked. What a devastating duo to think of having to go up against this gold miner. has started, but can Big Paws make the steal he needs? Oh, he gets it. Big Paws stealing away the gold miner, but now is he going to pay for it? He is going to go down. Chicken still in the vicinity as well, getting chased. Yugi needs to try and turn this one around. He secures himself the treant first just to make sure that that's not extra damage that they're taking. As he goes diving on in, looking for Wrecked. Wrecked will fountain, keeping himself and the team alive. Yugi still looking to get some damage traded back onto Cloud9, but Chicken, he's the one that's going very low. Those chain lightnings be doing a lot of damage 
but it will be both Chicken and Yugi surviving for now. Big Paws is back up. They got to figure hammers. They need to recall. They got to be happy after getting that gold miner and not. You know, they did trade a life for it, but they didn't lose anything else on top of it. Yeah, absolutely. Signs of life from Cloud9. They're here. It was a good steal coming out of Big Paws, but unfortunately, he didn't end up paying for it with his life. Hammers still have a pretty sizable lead, sitting about 5,000 now, but we're getting kind of that neutral point. Big Paws has gone very, very aggressive in his build with the Serpent's Mask, Breaking Point, and Sorrow Blade. And while it will be easy for him to ramp up that breaking point, he is very susceptible to the damage that I Love Joseph can put out, as we saw in that last little tango. But here we go. That's going to be Azurai getting jumped on by Yugi again. Everyone is right in the thick of things. Big Paws going down very low. Going to use his Rose Offensive to reposition. Here comes the Netherform detonation. That's going to be Yugi trying to get damage onto the back line of Cloud9, but they're just surviving for days here. Now there's going to be some big chunks of damage from the executions as Big Paws finds the first kill. Joseph looking to 1v1 Yugi. He will get that kill. Meanwhile, up in the lane, Chicken and Big Paws combine to take down Wrecked. It is I Love Joseph versus the world once again. But with his low health on Kashka, he's just going to have to recall and try and stop Hammers from making this push. Yeah, it was beautiful Holy Nova coming from Wrecked possibly saved themselves the ace there as uh if big paws would have had any more steps towards i love joseph he would have likely come in to get the kill but now big paws oh rough start here and yeah, definitely not the start to the fight that they wanted but they will get pushed out of the jungle we are getting closer and closer to that 15 minute mark just a little bit over two minutes away but it doesn't look like hammers want to wait for that they're diving on in another form detonation will get a lot of damage down azure and i has just melted before the divine intervention heal can even come through uh, old uh, i love joseph gets himself out of the fight but he returns the damage onto yugi and is able to find a kill once again this time chicken 1v1-ing the Kashka. Kashka has a little bit too much movement speed for an Arden to be able to chase down, but every single one of these fights has been two for one in favor of Hammers, and that is not going to be doing many favors for the side of Cloud9. Big Paws pushing in once again. Azure Knight is here to try and clear out the wave, but Big Paws says, you know what? I'm not going to try and dive under the turret. Not going to look for that kill. Just going to see if we can clear out anything from the jungle. Unfortunately, nothing is there now. Once they buy up a few items, maybe they regroup with Yugi and look to go aggressive once again. Yeah, could look to do so. In the last couple fights, we've seen as things get split up, it's usually this Varia dropping very quickly thanks to the dive that comes out of this Black Feather and the Reza. But once the fight has split up a little bit, Yugi's losing out on the 1v1s to Joseph. Gauntlet is out. Gauntlet's out, does stun up Wrecked. Nice job by Big Paws to avoid the Holy Nova. They just deleted Wrecked. Azure and I and Isle of Joseph both getting out alive. And I, look at what Joseph has been doing. This has been every single fight. Joseph, once they start to lose the fight, Joseph goes up to the lane, pushes the minions towards the hammer side, and it has prevented the members of Hollywood Hammers from being able to push in to the Cloud9 base. It has been so smart every single team fight. Even though they've been losing them, they've prevented the objectives from going, that tier three turret from going down because of those movements from Isle of Joseph. Uh, excellent plays out of him that wave stalling or pushing definitely has been helping them out uh, Unfortunately Yugi there jumped the wall wasn't able to see I love Joseph Joseph did get the recall out He makes it out alive, uh, but again in these 1v1s Joseph is almost always gonna take out uh, Yugi at this point just thanks to the build path. He's gone You know, he's got the aftershock as they both started off with but he went into the broken myth and also has an Aegis whereas Yugi his second completed item was that Clockwork and does not have the Aegis complete yet. So just the burst coming out of Kashka, if Cloud9 can continue to separate these fights, they should have a pretty substantial advantage. Joseph just picked up an Eve for a little bit more durability in these fights so that he can stick around, doesn't have to run right off the start and solo someone out on the side. He wants to be able to stay in these fights and help his team. Rekt is going to go very low. Netherform Detonation will be able to keep Rekt alive for now. The Vine Intervention on himself never a good idea when you're on a grace or never a good situation 
I should say, when you're on the grace, you have to use the ult on yourself as your knife. Going low, but Yugi is going to get jumped on by Joseph. Gets over the wall. They have found a kill onto both Wrecked and Azure Knights. Once again, Joseph, one versus three. See if he can do any magic here. He's looking to try and take down Yugi. Net 1v1. Chicken is here to try and help Yugi out, but Joseph still has a pretty good amount of health. Yugi will get that barrier. Dives on in, gets a lot of damage. Another nether form detonation is going to get him that fortified health. They're trying to chase down Joseph. Both Yugi and Joseph extremely oh. low. One more hit will do it, and Yugi will finally secure the ace for the Hollywood Hammers. Meanwhile, Big Paws has been starting up Kraken, has that almost captured, and this is looking like the beginning of the end for, the, for Cloud9 in game number one. Yeah, definitely looking to be that, and with the Kraken being secured, Yugi, with no health and energy, will be topped up, ready to go for the next fight, as well as picking himself up an infusion, big pause, and uh, I love Joseph as well, picking up the infusion. We do see Joseph's is in pocket, so he can save that and hopefully get the longest effect. If they can stop this push from Hammers, they are still well in the game. It's going to be difficult, though. They do only have their two Bane Crystal turrets, essentially, uh, for the defense, but here we go. Fight is starting up. There goes the ult from Varya. Again, not really going to be doing a lot of damage. Just trying to get a little bit in there before the fight really breaks out. Joseph was the target. Got taken down extremely low. Choke point turret has fallen. Hollywood Hammers pushing on into the base. Big Paw is actually taking a bit of punishment there from Azure and I. Azure and I is allowed to stand still and throw out attacks. He does so much work, but I love Joseph now in the middle of the entire enemy team. Will get a divine intervention. Big Paws has dropped. They got the kill onto the Black Feather that they so desperately needed, but they're going to continue chasing. That's an ult onto Chicken. Yummy Cat and Frenzy stunning him up, but they aren't going to get that kill. Kraken still in the base. They're looking for this fight, and there goes Yugi ulting over the wall so that he can help the Kraken take out this turret. And this is going to be Hammer's. Getting this second turret down onto the Vein Crystal now. How much work can Yugi do? Blocks the, the, the Supernova stun and now looks to take down the Vein Crystal with the help of Chicken and the Kraken. Hammers will end the game. Game number one going to Hollywood. Hammers 20 to 10 on the kills. I love Joseph, the only member of Cloud9 to get a kill up until that final fight. He was doing everything he could to try and keep his team in this one, but unfortunately was not able to contend with the damage from Big Paws. 15, 4, and 2. Yeah, excellent play out of both of these teams. Hopefully uh, DZ will be able to pull up the damage chart for us and touch some things up with that. At the end of that game, though, Cloud9 turned...